All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, season six of uh, Lit in English. Thank you for uh, for joining us. And uh, this uh, this is a very very excited uh, season. After over a years of uh, after over a years of uh, running this uh, Lit in English, I uh, we finally have uh, many many special guests in in this call today. And I would like to uh, to thank you for uh, for joining us. And uh, this season will be uh, titled "Understanding Your Inner World: Lit Up Your Path to Happiness as Whole Being." And I am super excited because I have my my dear friend Giovanni and uh, with me joining us this season. And uh, this season we are going to do it a little bit different compared to every other season because I would like to. Um, implement uh, what I have learned in in happiness studies to uh, the wonderful knowledge that uh, we have learned from our great master, our mentor. And in this call, we also have many other students who is currently taking the uh, certificate program. So I'm sure you are familiar with the knowledge so usually we will stick to a uh, 60 to, to 90 minute um, meeting. And uh, and uh, in the first 30 minutes, I will do a little presentation and hopefully we will get many, many wonderful uh, discussion after so that we can learn from each other. And just a quick reminder, this is the journey and this is a reoccurring meeting. Uh, we are going to meet at... Uh, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, every Wednesday. So uh, please uh, join us. And before uh, before we start, uh, I would like to uh, just introduce my friend Giovanni and Whitney. And uh, hopefully you can uh, you can say hi to everyone. You know, introduce a little bit about, about yourself, where you live, and then uh, and then we can start. And uh, let me uh, go ahead and invite uh, Whitney first. Hello, Whitney. Hello, Ben. I'm so excited to be here. This is so fun. Uh, I'm Whitney. I live in Chicago in the U.S. and I'm a writer and an editor and I'm also with Ben and Giovanni and Jasmine and Jesse and lots of other great people that you might know in the Masters in Happiness Studies. Wonderful. Thank you, Whitney. Giovanni? Well, my name is Giovanni. Um, I live in currently, as of this week, uh, West Palm Beach, but I will be moving to Port St. Lucie since my wife and I just bought a house in Port St. Lucie. Uh, we have a 12-month-old baby boy who was born on Valentine's Day last year, and uh, I am a retired police officer, and I am also with Whitney and Ben and Jasmine and Jesse and everyone else uh, in this happiness uh, program and you know we kind of came together uh, as a group to decide to uh, see what we can do throughout this journey so I'm kind of excited on and what's in store for us. Perfect and uh, congratulations uh, Giovanni on your uh, new house you know new family and uh, Giovanni has a wonderful uh, baby boy uh, every week I get to, to see him take care of his baby and uh, that is the encouragement for, uh, for me and Jasmine we decided to get married last uh, February in 2023 because we saw Giovanni and how happy he was. And he was like, if Giovanni can do it, we can do it. And then we decided to get married and uh, baby Bella Luna came very quickly after that. So it was such a blessing. And uh, thank Giovanni for that. <laughs> and I have learned so much from Giovanni too. And I'm sure we will have many, many wonderful uh, discussion. And uh as for Whitney, she uh, has helped uh, us uh, editing the uh, the book, Cultivate Happiness, Master Life, which hasn't come out yet, but I'm sure many of you will have a chance and you will appreciate her work so much. Uh, Whitney has such a high work ethic. Um, I, I believe she read at least over hundreds of times of the book, and she did such a great job on editing every single word to make sure that the, the meaning of uh, the introduction to to the master teaching is aligned with the Vietnamese version, and I have learned so much from from reading that. 
So thank you so much, Whitney. And uh, I would like to thank both of you for, for being here with us because you will provide such a wonderful perspective from the West when it comes to, to our knowledge. And this is a journey, everyone. I'm not here to teach or to, to, uh, to share anything amazing. We are going on this journey together. And uh, I can say this from experiment, experience. Each of the season, I learned something new through the presentation, through the discussion. So this is a very, very rewarding journey when we learn together, when we share together what we know. So I would, once again, I would like to thank you so much for, for joining us and please join us um, the many weeks ahead. So uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's start today a uh, presentation on the sixth barrier, which is one of my favorite. And just quickly, you can also click on the subtitle. I believe, let me make sure that I have that um, open. Mm, yeah, I should have opened that before we start. But let me make sure that uh, the option to start subtitle is working. Okay, uh, can someone let me know if you can turn on the the caption because on my end it should be on. So if you see the word CC well, on your screen, you should be able to click on it and uh, the caption should be available. All right, perfect. Um, well, please keep the caption in, in English. I keep it uh, like you can select it, but there's it's not going to show the, the Vietnamese part because we don't have the translation. But if you choose English for the, the subtitle, then you will see the subtitle as we speak. And Zoom is not having the best uh, subtitle, but uh, we we use what we have. All right, so uh, Whitney and Giovanni, this might be new to you, all this uh, drawing, but this is how we would like to, to do it. So this is a time where if you have a piece of paper, feel free to, to grab a piece of paper with some coloring pen and uh, we will start our presentation. And during the presentation, feel free to um, write your question um, in the chat or you can raise your hand. And uh, we can uh, interact to video. Let me make sure if I, I mute some uh, Okay. All right, so the presentation today is on the sixth barrier. This is definitely one of my favorite. And let's start out with drawing a little stick figure in the uh, top right. So imagine that this is your inner self. So for all of us, we uh, we often have barrier stopping us from accomplishing our dream, our vision. So I'm going to start by drawing six barrier around this thick figure, a little person. to represent the sixth barrier. And it is extremely important to have a clear understanding of the sixth barrier so that we can know what to do with it and how we can break through the sixth barrier in order to realize our dream, all right? So while I'm doing this, feel free to think about a time where you have the opportunity to, to grow and, uh, you, uh, because of the, the barrier. You might put it on hold. Maybe it is a dream where you, you have to defer. All right. And let me uh, go ahead and share some co-hosts. So uh, some of you might help me with the uh, the mic. Um, 
Jackman co-host, and then that's for Jesse to help me with the co-host. And I want uh, Whitney and Giovanni to focus on this, so you don't have to help me with the, the myth for now. All right. So imagine this is your inner cell surrounded by six barriers. And you can see, you can view this like a chicken egg, right? Everybody is familiar with uh, with a chicken egg, and the the wise man, the master, shared with us that if the force comes from the inside out, similar to that of a chicken, that would be life, because after the incubation period, then the chicken will hatch, right? So it's need to the force need to come from the inside, from within, right? But if there is the impact coming from the outside, then that would mean the egg is going to be used for food or at least it would be broken. So life is kind of like that because if we can break, do not break through the barrier from the inside out, if we don't do that consciously without life, then the world will break us. And generally, people tend to change after they experience suffering, but some do not. And for those who do not change, the worst kind of suffering will come for them. And if they still do not change, then losses will get them to change. That is the, uh, the cycle that eventually one will recognize in in their life and once we understand that you know the, the question is why do we have to wait for pain suffering and losses to to motivate us to change why can we love ourselves enough respecting ourselves enough to to go for growth to go for changes to be more proactive rather than reactive and this is the reason that we need to to under our inner self to elevate our wisdom so that we can stand above problem that will arise in life so we can be in control of our life, be in control of our destiny. And this is a journey to, to help us do that. And by going through this journey of understand your, your inner world to grow your inner self, we are hoping to make it through a transformation. Transformation. So imagine that this little stick figure will grow, will break through the six barrier and that inner self grow to be a bigger person maybe uh with some hair on the head with some belly button you know bigger arm and bigger leg and this person your inner self will continue to grow beyond what you can imagine at this time. All right. So transformation and the process of breaking through, letting free your your inner self is extremely, extremely important in, in many levels, in many perspectives. And we need to be aware of the six barrier so that we can break through those limits. And I would like to start with the, the first barrier. Let's go ahead and write number one here. All right, the first barrier that we need to, to break through is called limiting belief. So I would like to write the word limiting. Belief. All right, so what is 
limiting belief. Limiting belief is the type of belief that you are not good enough, but you're not able to to get to where you want it to be. And you know how like you have like a really good idea, and all of the sudden you start having thought of stopping you from taking those action, and because of that, a lot of people couldn't even take action to realize their dream. And uh, later on uh, in the uh-huh. happiness study, you will be able to uh, learn technique called like the one, two, three, or some even call it the three second rule, where as soon as you wanted to do something, you count to one, two, three, and you just do it to avoid this limiting belief. But in order to demonstrate the, uh, the harm of the limiting belief uh, barrier, I would like to tell you a quick story about the California gold rush in almost 200 years ago. So in uh, in 1850, there was a gold rush that uh, started in uh, in the east coast of the U.S. when they found out that there, there are large deposits of gold in the west coast in California, USA. And uh, because of that news, people started to flock to to California. There was over 300,000 uh, people. And for the purpose of um, of this story, um, I'm just going to use a story of, uh, of two friends. Let's call them Adam and uh, and Brian. So Adam and Brian are our best friends. And one day, Adam heard up the, uh, the Gold Rush story, and he was super excited. He, uh, he really wanted to go, and he believed that he is going to be so rich. He is going to be so wealthy because everyone that he had heard of had went and brought back some gold. So he went to his best friend, Brian, and invited uh, Brian to go with him because Adam didn't want to, to go alone. But as soon as uh, Brian heard of the story from Adam, Brian didn't believe it, and he started to come up with a lot of excuses, like how dangerous it could be, like how far it is, and Brian decided to uh, stay home. But Adam, with his determination, with his vision, he decided to go, and uh, just a year later, he uh, came back with uh, a bag full of gold, and he became very, very wealthy. Now... I want you to be a little interactive in the chat. So please let me know who have the limiting belief. Uh, let's number one for uh, for Adam, the guy that went to California and came back with a bag of gold, or number two, Brian, who who stayed in at home to uh, to just be safe. If you can just help me provide some some answer. In the chat, that will be a great. So I see Jasmine, uh, right number two for for Brian who is staying at home. And, all right. Does anybody have any other other idea? Uh, if you can find a chat in to young set to Brian as well. All right. So this question is it's easy to see that Brian is the one who had limiting belief. He has the barrier. He didn't believe in the vision and he started to see danger. He started to make a lot of excuses, not going. And some of you might think that this is such a, a silly question. It's, it is so obvious, but let me tell you, that this is the entire point because whether you choose one or two, whether you say the Adam or Brian, you're both right because the truth is both of them had their limiting belief. Brian is just more extreme because he, he didn't want to go. He just making all of these excuses. Adam, on the other hand, he went and he saw what was possible. And when he accomplishes his goal, he stopped and he went home. All right. So the story that a lot of people didn't tell about the gold rush is that there was people became very, very wealthy during the gold rush. They became extremely successful. But imagine 
those who love the state of California enough to stay and build the state, they was able to build generational wealth, right? Because California, if you were to compare its GDP to many other countries in the world, is definitely in the top 10. So limiting belief is very, very real, whether you believe you accomplish your goal or not, all right? For the extreme cases, people just want to live in their comfort zone. They don't want to accomplish anything. And for those who also limiting their belief to a certain goal, they are unable to accomplish something higher. And this is the reason that you often hear people tell you to get out of your comfort zone and growth. So in this journey of uh, understanding in your inner self and uh, lit up a path to happiness as whole being, later on I will introduce to you what it means to you to, to understand, to accomplish happiness as whole being. What does it mean to acquire the seven holistic wealth? Most people, because of limiting belief, they didn't reach their full potential. And I want to, uh, I want to, like, um, focus on on this point so that we can break through many many barrier that will be ahead of us so that we can truly achieve great wealth. Right. For other barrier I will go over very very quickly because they are all interconnected so the next barrier is quite obvious and that is fear of failure fear of failure so in the case of Brian he afraid to fail he afraid that he invests all of his time and he might not be able to find gold. So that would be an example of the fear of failure or failing. Um, you can say failure or failing is uh, about the same meaning. So number three would be fear of judgment. Fear of judgment. And this is the type of fear where we don't want our friends and family to, to let's say, make fun of us or judge us on the belief that might not be familiar with them. And because of that fear, because we want to fit in with uh, with our group, we, we don't want to take risk. Now, number four, a lack of Prerequisites. Prerequisites. So this is the fear that you don't have enough. You have what it takes to to accomplish your dream. Let's say in in business. There are people who really wanted to start a business, but they're afraid that they don't have enough money. They don't have enough uh, employee. And they just feel like they will not be able to accomplish their dream unless they have everything they, they need. And uh, that is um, one of the very, very big area barrier of stopping people from from realizing their, their dream. And then we have two more. Number five will be lack of knowledge. So lack of knowledge pretty much speak for itself as in they don't have enough information they don't have enough knowledge. In the case of Brian, he heard it for the first time about the gold rush and he felt like he didn't have any information. He didn't have any knowledge. 
in fact, he might feel like he don't have any of the the sixth element, or he have all six of the barrier. Number six is equally important to to number one, which is lack of vision. All right, so this is the six barriers that everyone has in any of uh, their venture. And um, you you might feel related to 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 these barriers um, if you were to reflect sometime in your life. And I would like to share with you uh, another story that will demonstrate all six of of these this barrier, right? So the story is about Mr. Roger Bannister and the timeline was sometime in the 1950s. Right? The special thing about this story is that in 1950, the, the, the entire world believed that it was impossible to run one mile under four minutes. So I know there's a lot of um, my Vietnamese friends in this Zoom. So one mile is equal to 1.6 kilometer. Another way to uh, to visually see it is if you happen to go to a soccer game or a football American football game, you often see a track that run around the, the football field or the soccer field. So if you were to run around like the soccer field like that, that is a quarter of a mile, which means you have to run four times around the soccer field under four minutes. And that is the equivalence of running around the soccer field one minute or under one minute in order to make it one mile under four minutes. Right? It's very, very tough. I try. I didn't make it. So I can be honest with you about it. You have to run at your top speed and you have to maintain it in four minutes. I, I often run out of breath after like 10 seconds. So that didn't work for me. Um, but in 1950, the entire world believed that it is impossible to run one mile under four minutes. The fastest runner at that time, I believe, ran around four minutes and three seconds to, to make it to the, the one mile mark. So all of the experts, all of the doctors and scientists back then, they believe in it so much that they they actually did some research study to prove that, that it is impossible to just run one mile under four minutes. They, they said that the, the leg, the structure of the human body is this way. And because of that, impossible to run one mile under four minutes. And the story that literally changed the way that the world thinks is the story about Mr. Roger Bannister. He was an, uh, uh, a graduate student in, in Oxford. And Mr. Roger Bannister, he he's not a professional uh, track and field or a runner. He's not a professional. He um, He's an athlete and he had never made it that mark. But somehow he just believes strongly that it is possible to run one mile under four minutes. And he makes an announcement that he is going to run one mile under four minutes. And on May 6, 1954, on a cold, wet day in Oxford, England, people gather for a race. And Mr. Roger Bannister were able to break the record at three minutes, 59 seconds. And he was the first person to break the, the four minute mark. And that news has shaken the world because nobody thought that it was possible. But Mr. Roger Bannister did it. And later on in, uh, in many of the research on, on this event, they they have learned that Mr. Roger Bannister, not only he, he practiced running, but
but because he believes so much in how he will be able to break the, the four minute mark and he exercises it in his mind. He's actually able to see the vision of him make it by the four minute mark. And this is the story that was told all over the world about limiting belief. So let's break it down really quickly. What happened and why did Mr. Roger Bannister was able to run one mile under four minutes? I think the first and the most important um, one is he has the vision, right? So there is no lack of vision for him. He just had the vision and he just knew that he would be able to do it. So there is no limiting belief. And because he make an announcement to the world, there's no fear of failing. He's was judged by everybody, right? Nobody believed him. He's, he said that uh, he was crazy for, for even try to do it and how he's going to be hospitalized. So there are tons and tons of judgment, but there's definitely no fear of judgment on his end. What about lack of prerequisites? That wasn't an issue even though he wasn't a professional athlete and he might not have what it takes, but that was not a barrier for him. What about lack of knowledge? Now, this is kind of funny because maybe because he do have the lack of knowledge, maybe that was what helped him break through the, the one mile under four minute mark because though who are, who were the expert, right? Though who with the knowledge, they believed that it was impossible. They didn't even try to attempt it. So in a way, you can say that he, because of lack of knowledge, he was able to, to make it under the four minute mark. But I, I bet the difference, I think he, he believed that he had all the knowledge needed to, to do it. And that's how he was able to do it. So Mr. Roger Bannister is a story to, to show us, to prove it to us that if we could just break through the sixth barrier, we will be able to accomplish anything. But now the story doesn't end there. What amazing is that within the matter of month, there are many, many people in the world who was able to break through the, the one mile under four minute mark, right? And now we have to ask ourselves, like, what happened, you know? Like, why was it that hundreds of years ago, hundreds of years prior to the event on 1954, why didn't anyone uh, make it under four minutes? And they realized that because Mr. Roger Bannister was able to shatter the limiting belief of the entire world, that he was able to provide them a vision, a possible vision. And because of that, those who was able to break through the four minute mark, they was able to break through all six of the barrier and they accomplished something beautiful. And just a matter of years, um, there were, were like hundreds of athletes that was able to, to break through the one mile under four minute mark. And this is extremely, extremely important. I want you to, to take a moment to think about that story because you will see that story happen over and over again. And one of the, the most powerful story that I greatly admire is the story of Bill Gates, right? So when Bill was in his teenager, he loved computer probably. You, you probably heard of this story already, but it is so important that I have to tell it. And Bill Gates had a dream and he told his professor about it. He had a vision that computer will exist in every single household. He, he just knew it. And he think to himself that in order for computer to function, computer will need software, right? So beside the hardware part, computer gonna need a software to be useful. And he think it is, it is the best thing ever 
and he was very into it and he decided to to pursue a career in in writing software well his professor thought that he was crazy because computer back then cost like four million dollar and it would take up the entire room in today money that's easily go for let's say 20 million dollar so in order for computer to make it in every single household um they have to have like let's say 10 million dollar in today money they have to have a big house to to house the, the computer so the expert thought that it was impossible so they have their limiting belief they have the fear of failure fear of judgment lack of prerequisite lack of knowledge and lack of vision, and they proudly call themselves the experts. So Bill Gates continued to pursue his dream, his vision to be precise, because he had a future vision. He went on to create it, Microsoft with his friends, and he became one of the youngest billionaire in the 70s or the 80s, I believe, and then he became the world richest man for decades. And now you can see computer everywhere, right? It's in your phone, it's in your computer, obviously, it's in your washing machine, your uh, stove, in your car. It is everywhere. And software is everywhere as well. And the reason I'm telling you the story is because similar to Mr. Roger Bannister, you know, the moment Bill Gates became a young billionaire, we started to see many, many young billionaires come after him. In the early 2000s, we started to see uh, PayPal, we started to see Facebook, and then eventually Yahoo, Google, too many to name. But prior to Bill Gates, I didn't think that people thought it was possible to be a self-made billionaire in their early 20s, All right? So this is a journey to understand your inner world, to lead up your path to happiness. And when I'm speaking of happiness as hoping, it is about having a great experience in this physical world, okay? You deserve to to be happy, you deserve to find happiness through material well-being, through money. But at the same time, there are other important elements too, like health, like relationship, like your inner self, the relationship with, with yourself. And I want to end my presentation and open it to open it up to discussion to a very important point is the limiting belief, the number one. Because similar to the gold rush story, Bill Gates has a limiting belief to believe or not, all right? He was the youngest billionaire. He was the richest billionaire in the world, but he still has his limiting belief. And I have made my observation through many, many successful people in the world. Because my mentor once told me that, you know what, Ben, like whatever field that you decide to get into, make sure that you find someone who have done it for a long time, who have accomplished the goal that you wanted to accomplish. And then you pay close attention to, to their life. You see if that is the life you want. So I have been making observations for years. And I have not found any lifestyle that I want to have for my own until the very recent year. And I'm still I'm still exploring, I'm still learning. And this is the journey, everyone. And I'm so thankful that I get to, to go on this journey with so many people. I'm so thankful to to my friends, family, loved one, my uh my great master, all of the wise men and the women who are who are going on this journey with me because you know what together we we are better and uh, we can learn from each other we can gain great perspective and this is also the reason i am so happy to have giovanni with me and many of my classmates from the ma in happiness study 
uh, who are also my teacher, my mentor when I was learning, and I am still learning. They are still my mentor, my teacher, and we are all we are having the opportunity to learn this in English so that we can spread this amazing knowledge all over the world, and we will be able to do so much work because you know what you can accomplish anything that, that you wanted and in the journey we will learn how to break through all of these barriers especially the, the limiting belief so with that i would like to uh to open for a discussion feel free to uh to send some question in the chat if you are able to you know interact through camera and uh, if uh, possible feel free to raise your hand to uh to share with us your uh, your i am you know something you find interesting actionable and meaningful and if possible i would love to hear from uh, from Giovanni first and Whitney because I always had great lesson that I learned from them. So I'm, I'm super excited to to hear what uh, they have to say, what they have to share. And I, I, I see that uh, Giovanni has his hand raised already. Uh, Giovanni, please. First of all, uh, hello everyone. And wow, this is this is great, Ben. Um, I had so many pictures going through my head and I'm sitting here in my journal just trying to catch up and jot everything down that you're you're saying and I'm I'm seeing it in such a, a natural way so if you were to take uh for instance your little man that you made there the big man and you add a couple more arms and legs to the side of him all over right it begins to look like a flower okay uh like a sunflower first of all and then to your left, the man that's inside of, you know, the bubble with the six barriers, it looks like a, a seed, like a, a potential of a person, right? Waiting, waiting to break out, like you said, from, you know, that egg from the inside. So when you do that, that's where the seed starts to take root and then germinate into its blooming, which is the full trans transformation. So... I'm I'm looking at this kind of like it's it's our garden, right? Like we're we're in this garden all together. Um and by your presentation, these limiting beliefs, you know, the fear of failing, the fear of judgments, um the prerequisites. Let's see what I wrote. I said uh, limiting beliefs are just perceptions. They're just what we tell ourselves, right? Um and the opposite of a belief on the other spectrum is a knowing, which is certainty. And that's that's where strength comes from. There's no doubt when you know something. But when you believe something and it becomes untrue in your eyes, um, that's where a lot of the problems and, and chaos starts to begin in our heads. Uh, and we get the fear of failure and we get the fear of judgment, which, you know, I, I just think that the judgment just doesn't come from a higher source. It comes from from us, uh, from our our limiting perception of ourselves. Um, the lack of prerequisites, I just wrote that this is just, you know, um, it's readiness. You know, you have to be ready in order to accomplish anything. And if you're not ready and you're lacking your prerequisites, so that that's building resilience. Um, you know, going through the hardship, which is the soil that helps, you know, the seed germinate, um, you know, that, that suffering does something to it that helps us grow. We're not a victim in the suffering. Um, you know, the, the fear of, of failure, I wrote down that it's, it's just confusion saying that, you know, we're not getting enough light to grow. Uh, we're making excuses. Um, because I, I think that ultimately we're, we're scared to be ourselves. Um, that's where the ultimate fear comes from. I also wrote down uh, the lack of knowledge, which I said again is knowledge is power because in that 
it gives us the ability to choose better for us at any given moment in the present. Um, you know, also with the fail of failure, I see that how space and time and the confusion of, of that can play a part, you know, in us thinking that how we fail because the reality is that eternity is now and there really is no time. You know, it's just a made up concept that we all agreed upon basically, you know, in order to learn. So once we take responsibility of that, of our choices, um, then it becomes easier to change, which is a choice itself, all of these six barriers. All it takes is a choice in order to change these, in order to transform. Yeah. And the lack of vision and true vision is just correction that, you know, since we are all one, we are not separate. Um, direction is just saying, okay, I made a mistake in my thinking. Let me correct it and make it the right choice. Um, every moment that we have is a, another opportunity to make the right choice that aligns with our authentic self in our unique you know journey from a seed into a booming you know flower and um one thing that vision requires is light uh we cannot see in darkness and the light is required for us to grow for plants to grow um and light is knowing light is truth and light is the source of everything so I thought it was you know, beautiful uh, what you did, and I really appreciate um, you. You know, you going to these lengths because I really like the visuals. You know, it really helped me a lot. So, thank you. Beautiful, thank you, Bonnie. I'm glad you mentioned light because the next uh, presentation next week we will we'll get to learn about the principle of light. So I think you will like it a lot. <laughs> and then everyone there is a journey. So the next presentation it will be a build up from this and the next next presentation will build up from what we have went through so please join us next week and the week after that when trust me this is going to be extremely extremely interesting time because we we do have a western point of view and not just anybody in the west we have some of the greatest people from the west that i have know of right that was uh, my dear friend Giovanni and Whitney, and I cannot hear what Whitney had to say. I I hear I see you nodding throughout the presentation and now smiling, and uh, let's uh, let's hear it. Ah, uh, I loved it so much. This is so exciting because I didn't know exactly what I was getting into. So it's just been a beautiful unfolding, and I love that Giovanni spoke before me. Let me lower my hand because um because it it's such a beautiful example of what you were saying about the power of exemplars and role modeling and like you said i learned so much from both of you and from all of our other classmates and we are all on this journey together and the different perspectives we have and you know informed by, by our different experiences it just adds to it so what you said about um roger bannister's ability to change the perception for everyone. I, that was something that really stuck with me when I heard this story too. It just did the number of people that suddenly they saw it, they believed it and, and rapidly all of a sudden all these people could do it. So you saw how mental it was. And then your example about Bill Gates and, you know, we know so many other people who have done the same thing for others. And I really like the concept of mimetic leadership and thinking about, you know, you mentioned um, how your your master has talked about choosing somebody to like model yourself after and seeing someone who has a life that you aspire to and and then using that as role model. And I think that that's so powerful. But we can also take from various exemplars and say, ooh, I really like what this person has in this one area and this other person has in this other area. And then we create our own vision of our blooming self that is an amalgamation of the best of all these other people. And then also the unique qualities that we bring. So I think that that's really beautiful. And the, the point that in this 
this call, all of us are role models for other people. And so realizing that we are setting the example for others is really powerful and empowering too. And, you know, like each of you do that for me. When I hear you speak, when you step up and you take the opportunity to connect, I'd love that heart. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, and share your knowledge with others that helps me to be able to do that too. And so I think when we realize that whether it's for our families or for our colleagues or fellow students, whatever, it's really good that we step into that role as much as we are inspired by others to recognize that we are inspiring others. So that was really big for me. And then the other like very nerdy point that I thought of was um, the fact that the other thing that Roger Bannister did and Bill Gates and everyone else who has massive success is they worked for it. They didn't just have the vision. They did things to bring the vision to life. And there's great research by Shelley Taylor and Liam Baum who um, did the journey to the A. I don't know if you guys remember that, but it's a, like they had two groups of students and one group of students just imagined that they got an A at the end of the semester on a big thing. And the other group was said they were instructed to imagine going to the library and studying and, you know, like doing all of the things like group projects and stuff to get to the point of getting the A. And that group had significant success that was really high, whereas the other group performed normally. So it was it was part of the fact that imagining the journey also helps you to actually do the the work in real life and partly just imagining the journey itself is helpful so don't just view the end point but also view the journey there which is part of the beauty of these calls and what you keep saying about the fact that this is a journey and that it's you're always growing but when we are aware of that and we dig into it then we get the most power out of it but those were my big points thank you so much Sarah. With um, with the also we have like some some great point to uh, to share, and I don't know how she does it, but she always remember uh, the uh, the researcher and how the research and just come like right up. And I think like what Whitney had to say when he she share is it's like she asked such a great value to uh, to this journey. Because I know that is my weakness, you know. I, I just don't remember people's name, and I don't remember the the research, even though I I know it is there. So everyone, you know, this is a great opportunity to to learn about research study that can help with uh, the lesson that we have learned here. So when when people do ask, we we will have a uh, many many great actual research study to to back up our claim. And this is so valuable. And I'm learning as well. And uh, Whitney, you, your voice is beautiful, and you, you are so beautiful too. And uh, thanks for 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 joining, and uh, Giovanni as well. A lot of people say that you know when I post the posters, the people say that man, everyone looks like uh, Hollywood stars. And um, I tell them you are right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, great, wonderful, and uh, I would like to to hear. Uh, more um you know um thing that you find interesting any lesson that uh, you uh, have learned or if you just want to interact with uh, Whitney and Giovanni I think mean, it's a great opportunity as well I can see why me and Jesse you know I'm sure you guys have a little interaction in the MA in happiness study but uh, this is a brand new environment you know we actually are sharing uh, our inner self, inner world um, stuff, and uh, I think it's just a, it's just an amazing uh, event with an amazing opportunity to just learn from from each other. Yep. Oh, we did you say that the the research from Shelly Teller and Lin Fan is another that's a Vietnamese name, so I definitely uh, missed that. Yeah, since right now it's like the uh, Vietnamese time, I do have some 
friends who live here in the U.S. So thank you for, for joining us because I know it's uh, pretty late here in the East Coast. Uh, I see why you you raise your hand. Uh, please uh, mute yourself. Thank you. So good morning, Ben. Good morning, Giovanni and Whisney and everyone in the Zoom this morning. <laughs> you know, here in Vietnam, we are still enjoying the, you know, the beauty of the spring. And also, you know, the Tet holidays, uh, sweetness is still around. <laughs> and especially today, I really happy to uh, receive, uh, you know, the message from Ben that he will start his uh, like uh, season six in sharing about the knowledge uh, to about related to the happiness and understanding the inner words, creating the inner peace. And with the presence of uh, Giovanni and Whitney, so it's really warm hearted for me and for all of the people. Um, because we already together learning last month, ne nearly two years. And we are, you know, very exciting to prepare everything so that we can be present in the graduation ceremony in May. And last night we have a really like a huge meeting together and to clarify everything we should prepare for that. So today with the presence of my dear happiness junior and with the sharing from Ben, so I really, really happy. And, um, you know, I feel really grateful also for the chance that I miss my master in WIT organizations that Master Jung Thanh Toang. And he is also the master uh, of Ben and Jasmine and many uh, of, uh, people in the Zoom in the community. And I also grateful for the chance to study happiness uh, together with Sister Chow, Green Team, and all of the wonderful classmates from all over the world. <laughs> and today we go into the subject of the sixth barrier in life and i think that uh, you know is the uh, knowledge will bring us uh, like a new uh, vision open us into a new uh, way of looking to the life and it's also help us to to like um, help us in some some way in one way or another ways to help us to create a better and also happier and happier. And as Ben said that, uh, as in we are human beings, so somehow we are kind of have one or one or more, one or two or more of these six barriers. But all of this one is just coming from ourselves, from the inner. I mean, that it's just, you know, we are the one who created it. So in order to, you know, to like have a breakthrough and to create a transformations. So we have to, you know, give us a chance to take a chance for transformation. And all of that is, you know, to understand about what is the limit or the barrier that we are having. And then we have we 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 create our desire as to overcome because all of the change will be coming will come from the desire. For example, I want to understand more about the knowledge of happiness so that I can have not only myself but uh, the people around me to create like a happy life. So from that desire, so I register to take part in the happiness courses. So when I had give me a chance to be in the journey. So, you know, I received wonderful and wonderful lesson and also the wonderful relationship, you know. And every time I go to class, I feel really happy. <laughs> so that is also the barrier. Somehow, maybe because I am Vietnamese, my speaking is not, you know, as good as um, many other people. But okay, I still give myself a chance to 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 start my journey and through that journey so I will improve also my ability and I learn and I grow day after day and uh, you know the first time I break my barriers is the time I raise my hand I speak in front of the whole class that I call that the time I break my barrier because uh, when I take into the courses 
I really confident in speaking in breakout room, but you know when I uh, in the big room, I I I have not yet have enough uh, you know courage to raise my hand. But from the time I uh, I be able to raise my hand and speak the first time. So it continued to be the second time, and then you know I uh, really I opened uh, a little bit and a little bit, and now whenever I have something I would like to share or uh, some lesson or some message I would like to share, so it kind of like very natural, and you know I just raise my hand and I I share about my points of views, so that is you know just the barrier that I put in myself. And I am the one who, you know, removed this. <laughs> so I think that um, uh, this knowledge is really, you know, precious because um, it will help us to summarize. Maybe there are barriers of barrier, but this is the six main things, especially the, the number six, the lack of vision. Uh, because if we have a vision, so it will like a guideline in our life. And it will help us to, you know, overcome all of the, you know, potential, maybe limited that we have. Uh, so, you know, for example, for myself, my vision is to become a happiness spreader so that I can bring the precious knowledge that I receive not only from uh, the teacher talk and the community, and also the teacher in Vietnam in WIT organization to, you know, to um, share and to, you know, like a present I want to give to many people in the world to, you know, to create a better life with happiness and, you know, inner peace. And thank you so much for giving me a chance to share my lesson today. Thank you for your presence, Whitney and Giovanni and everyone in the Zoom. <laughs> thank right. you so much thank you yeah likely and uh, uh i have a friend from uh from virginia uh, he is also in this zoom i don't know if he uh if it uh suitable or convenient for him to just say hi and tom d but if you uh if you can then just raise your hand and milk and say hi to to everyone very quickly uh tom is the husband of the uh and they have eight children and they have they, they have such a wonderful happy family and i hope that he uh and his wife can be uh, present in, in our meeting more in the future because there are many stuff that we share here they have a reality uh, of those experience and i just want to introduce them very quickly before we uh, we end the, uh, the presentation hello and Tom. Hello, uh, greeting everyone from uh, Washington DC here in Virginia. Uh, I am new to this. I talked to Ben and one a uh, couple of days ago and I'm excited to get on and uh, seeing what we can learn from each other. Uh, did I just get logged off? No, you are, we can still hear you. Oh, you still hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, I'm I'm a little bit confused between the machine here. I have about three Zoom going on. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I have to mute. Uh, it's it's uh it's peak time for me. Uh, but I'm um I was looking forward to this uh, meeting this community and looking forward to hear and learn from Ben and his wife. Uh, I I just came back from Vietnam from a, a six month uh, trip, uh, learning all of this uh, plus a lot more. And I'm I'm new to this community, uh, but I'm falling in love with it. I, I I'm learning so much, and uh, it's helping me personally and my family. So I'm I'm still um, uh, learning how to share all of this, and and digesting the materials is very deep. It's it's so simple, uh, but we're gonna learn so much from it. So uh, I'm here to learn. I'm here to be a part of the community. And uh, very uh, nice to meet all of you. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you are in this uh, area or, or nearby. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to meet sometime soon. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ben. Thank you, Wen, for having us on. And uh, thank you for sharing. Thanks, Tom. Uh, you know, me and Jasmine will be there in uh, late uh, April. Hopefully, I can introduce uh, Whitney and Giovanni one day. 
but yeah, we would love to uh, to visit there. Now, um, I want to keep the presentation within an hour, maximum 90 minutes. Um, I would like to, to end this presentation with one last thing, because the sixth barrier is introduced, but some of you may wonder, okay, so I now that I know about the sixth barrier, how do I break through the sixth barrier? How can I realize my dream? We are going to address that question throughout our journey, but I don't want you to go home empty-handed. So this is how you break through the sixth barrier and you don't have to understand it right now. Okay? Just keep this in mind and throughout this journey, you will have your realization. And when that happens, feel free to, to share with us your transformation story. All right, so the key to break through all six of this barrier is vision. Well, I would like to call it future. Vision. In the story of Mr. Roger Bannister, he had the future vision of himself broke through that four minute mark. And because he had the future vision, he doesn't have the limiting belief. And there's no fear of failure, no fear of judgment, no fear, no lack of prerequisite, no lack of knowledge, right? Same for Bill Gates and many other billionaires. They actually see the vision and they truly believe in it. And they just know that they will be able to do it regardless what the expert, the professional said about their vision. They knowing, just like what Giovanni said earlier. And that is the difference between believing and knowing, right? So once you are knowing, you no longer have limiting beliefs. So the key here is future vision. And thanks, Giovanni, for brought up that point. Another important point that I want to brought up is in this journey, you have to figure out how to remove your limiting belief. This is what's stopping you from growth, right? So if you can just have future vision, right? You have a beautiful vision about your success, whether it's in inner self, whether in health, whether in relationship or financial well-being. You got to see the future vision. You got to see that it is possible. And the moment you are able to remove your limiting belief or you often hear people who lift up their limit, Right? I hear this term all the time since I was young until now. I didn't understand it. But I'm telling you, the moment that you lift your limit, you will know. And this is the importance of this very first presentation. We often limit ourselves and we just we don't even aware it. And just like the story that I shared about the California gold rush, about Bill Gates, okay? As successful as Bill Gates was, he still has his limiting belief. And we are going to address this in, in this journey. I see uh, Jesse raise her hand also. I would like to, uh, I want to make sure that she, she gets to you. She got her uh, saying, so <laughs> Jesse, please unmute yourself. Uh, hello, Ben. Hello, Jasmine. Uh, hi, Joni and with me. Um, yeah, I would like to say something that I uh, I just give you the appreciation that you join us today. Um, actually, I'm at work, but I would like to um, take, turn on my camera, turn on my mute and say something with you guys. Um, actually, um, thank you so much, Ben, for uh, helping us on studying um, learning English by the languages. And we study um, more and more. Um, you know that um, we are learning about the inner self, but my, um, our master, our grandmaster, he is studying 10 languages, 10 languages. And in the future, you know that we can use the English as the second language, but we can say something about I am together. 
and in our communication, in uh, in our community, we are using language as a second language, but we aren't to use it. And you know that um, before uh, language is also the barriers of mind. But now you know that um, you guys help me understand more about the barrier and more understand more about limiting belief. And now I can I can unbreak. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. That's it. Thank you. And Jesse, um, I've been seeing Jasmine been turning on her camera for a while, but I think the baby wasn't very uh, cooperating <laughs> earlier. Um, I don't know if Jasmine would want to say something. I might need to like step back there and take care of uh, baby Bella Luna, everyone. So I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, and milk myself very quickly. Hi, uh, thank you for <laughs> being here today. I uh, I like to listen more than I uh, would want to share, uh, just because I love to listen. And um, one of my uh, limiting beliefs before was um, that I'm not able to listen to other people to speak, you know. It's like I, I would be the one who speak most of the time. Because uh, people want to hear me and I want to speak. That's what I love to do. But then now I learn to listen to other people and I just enjoy listening to other people. Um, but one of the things that I really love about the picture, um, and then I realized that I, um, when I stopped sh sharing, and especially like drawing the little man, I was drawing the face of the little man inside a web of chaotic i was like drawing the happy face <laughs> and then i did not know um i make a mistake you know um and it, like the zoom that i share and i draw the picture of the little man with happy face inside a like conflict web um you know the web of conflict um i did not know i did that and then after the zoom ben was like why did you do that? I was like, what did I do? You know, what did I do wrong? And he was like, you was like happy inside a conflict and then you break through the conflict and you are still happy. And that's not how it works. You're supposed to be, you know, you're supposed to feel pain or something like that. But anyway, the emotion, the emotional of like the little man when he or she is in the web uh, should not be unhappy, like should be unhappy, not like happy, you know. And then I realized, so this is my aim. I realized that I could be happy in the conflict, inside a conflict zone, but maybe I was like have a delusion of myself that I have. I live in my perfect world without breaking through the barrier. You know, I could be happy or I could be confused that I'm being happy inside my old conflict zone. Um, and then the minute that I realized that I am being conflict with myself, I could break it through. And that is when I realized, you know, the life is more than what I think it is. So just because I draw a little face, I, I draw the happy face, then I have a big lesson. Um, but if have I not making that mistake, I would never learn, and I would not remember. Um, yeah, that 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 was my biggest lesson um, on that day, like about a year ago. And until this day, I still remember that lesson. Thank you for listening. Beautiful. Uh, thank you, Jasmine. Uh, yep. Um, if we could share our experience, everyone, we we had a lot more perspective and we can learn from from each other you know we don't have to live like many many lives to learn all of this knowledge we can go on this journey together and by sharing we learn from each other and we will enrich our life and with that i would like you to end this presentation thank you so much for joining us and uh, i would like to play a song and we can we can say uh, goodbye and i will see you next week this has been a wonderful um, presentation wonderful interaction and thank you so much for for all of it <laughs>